Hey golf fans, get ready for one of the most important swing analysis videos in history. We are going to take an in-depth look at the legendary ball striker, Mo Norman's golf swing, and we are going to figure out, was he actually single plane or was he inside and over the top? You're watching the Over the Top Miracle Swing. Hey there, Miracle Swingers. Have I got an incredible video for you today. And it is with Mo Norman, widely considered to be the greatest ball striker in history, who's famous for the single plane swing. He's got an inside over the top move, just like Sam Snead, just like Bobby Jones, and just like Arnold Palmer and thousands of other great golfers. It seems like every time I look at a great ball striker, they've got this move, especially the ones, I mean, pre-1980, that's for sure. So we're gonna take a really close look at Mo Norman's golf swing. And if you wanna learn the Mo Norman golf swing, I suggest you check out Todd Graves, Graves Golf Academy. He's a good friend of mine and they are the experts in the Mo Norman swing. I'm just observing the transition and I was shocked when I traced it. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my goodness gracious. Here's another one. One of the greatest in history with an inside and over the top golf swing. Now, if you wanna learn the inside over the top golf swing, my next weekend school miracle swing experience is September 2nd and 3rd. Oh my goodness, that is beautiful. Come on out to Pasadena. It's gonna be Saturday and Sunday, and we're gonna have an amazing time. So just hit me up, Christo, at myswingevolution.com for details, or go to miracleswingexperience.com. I've got a sign-up sheet there, and I've got a lot of great products. And don't forget, if you like these videos, click like, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel. It's growing every day, and we are starting a movement in the world of golf because people are realizing dropping it under isn't the way to go, but inside and over is the most leverage. It's the easiest way to hit great golf shots. So let's dig into today's video with ball striking legend, Mo Norman. Mo Norman was a Canadian professional golfer who was born on July 10th, 1929. And he got the nickname Pipeline because he could hit shots perfectly straight time after time. Now, Mo Norman won 55 tournaments in Canada, and Sam Snead claimed Norman was the game's greatest striker of the ball. And you may recall Tiger Woods even said, only Ben Hogan and Mo Norman owned their swings. Mo won back-to-back -back Canadian Amateur Championships in 1955 and 1956. He then turned professional in 1957 and played briefly on the PGA Tour, but due to shyness and bullying he encountered from certain pros, he preferred to stay in Canada and played primarily in Ontario rather than travel outside of Canada. In the 1980s, Norman also played several events on the senior PGA Tour. He devised what is known as the single plane golf swing that's taught by my friend Todd Graves. Rigid arms extended far from the body and a wide base with minimal knee bend at the start. Having played with Todd Graves and Reed Howard, I can tell you this method works. All right, guys, I'm super excited to talk about Mo Norman's golf swing. There are three elements in particular that I want to address today. First is the magic move. The second is his lateral shift. And then last is his inside over the top move. You probably remember that I compared Mo Norman to Ben Hogan in one of my most famous videos where Mo Norman says his magic move is getting his right elbow under and you can see clearly that Ben Hogan is doing something very similar. It, it almost seems to corkscrew their bodies open. You know, they, they really open up that lead side and get that trail side under, which I think helped them keep the face square a little bit longer. Now, the second element is I've always seen Mo as having this huge lateral shift. And 
I was talking to Jim McLean about lateral shift in Hogan's swing. I'm like, man, Mo Norman's got to be even bigger than, than Ben Hogan. So I decided to take a look at this swing right here from the rear. It's one of the best swings I can check out for this. I put a trace on the club head. You can see he really goes wide to narrow. But in this next one, I'm going to put a dot on his left hip, okay, because I think this is going to give us a really good idea of how much lateral motion he has in his swing. So at the top of his back swing, we don't see much of a, a gap. He does load into his right side. But watch this lateral shift. That's not nearly as much as I had anticipated. I thought it was going to be a lot more than that. So that was kind of a shocker. Now, if we look at this great swing from the front, we see all the hallmarks, the body locks. So I'll tell you, there's uh, two things I want to give you a tip that I got from Kelly Murray, who is a former World Long Drive champion that worked with Mo Norman. And the two things he pointed out was like, people asked Mo all the time, why were his joints fully extended? And Mo's answer was, what's straighter than straight? Meaning, if he fully locked out his joints, he could always be measured precisely to where he wanted to be in relation to the ball. What's straighter than straight? Now, the second genius thing that Kelly told me about Mo Norman was setting the club back behind the ball about 16 inches or so. Mo Norman would say, everybody says you want to take the club back low and slow. What's lower than on the ground? What's slower than stopped? <laughs> so this is the ultimate way to take the club back is low and slow. Is he just already starts a club back. So Byron Nelson said the most important part of the swing was the first 18 inches away from the ball. And Mo solved that by going ahead and setting the club preset 18 inches or so behind the ball. So I've got a dot here on Mo Norman's left hip, and I've got a square over his head so that we can take a look at how much movement he has in the golf swing. So as we take this club back, we're going to see Mo has an immediate lift away from the ball. And he has a very flat inside takeaway. But now we're going to see the big lunge move. And this is what everybody says you shouldn't do. But he, he lunges and drops. I mean, that's Trevino-esque, the amount of drop he has from top to bottom. And if you really key in on that head, I mean, this is... This is truly remarkable. A lot of people say you've got to keep your head still. Jack Nicholas says that. But I'll tell you, Mo had this worked out so that he could just repeat this action robotically time after time. Truly unbelievable. Now let's take a look at this overhead swing. I find this fascinating as well. Now, from the top, it, it really doesn't look very odd to me. Good rotation. Like, if we're just looking here to here, what a beautiful golf swing. There's nothing idiosyncratic about this at all. A perfectly beautiful motion. Now, one thing I would like to mention is Mo said that he believed he was reaching towards the target and swung down the line. And this is something I feel is very, very important not to do. I, I swing the club back inside. I used to swing out towards the target, and I found it very detrimental. But we can see that the club head is moving in to out, and it certainly moves back in. So I would say that that was more of a, a Mo Norman feeling. So let's get to where my shock and awe happened was taking a look at this swing right here. We can see Mo Norman taking the club back inside and up. 
and that club stays well above the plane and we'll see that club does exit back towards the inside it exits below his left shoulder which is an absolute shocker for someone who's saying that he swings down the target line towards the target but the one thing that i would say to support what he's feeling is he's one of the amazing golfers that you'll see full right arm extension um because Trevino and Hogan had a lot of right arm bend here, but I think that when he's talking about swinging out down the line, um, that's what he's feeling is that full extension of the right arm sooner than most others. And the, again, that club is exiting below his left shoulder. Amazing. Now, if I put a handle trace on his hands, we'll see that this club is going his hand path is going inside, up, and out towards the ball. Okay, now the club shaft is flattening. I can drop this line in there, and I think that it's pretty clear to see that, that it's going from being more upward to flattening out, which is a hallmark of many of the best ball strikers in history. But that club head is still going to remain above the back swing plane. So was Mo OTT? I'll leave that up to you. But I do think he's one of the greatest ball strikers in history. And we all have a lot to learn from these legends of the game. So go to MiracleSwingExperience.com if you'd like to learn more about how I swing the golf club. And in the meantime, I hope you hit them long and hit them straight.